Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And one of our subscribers, Astro Island, asked an amazing question and the results surprised me. So I want to make a video on that. And the question is, should you use blur exterminators correct only on separated channels or on a combined color image? And that's what we're going to go over today. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any viable information. Now let's jump into PixInsight and see the difference between using correct only on separated channels and a combined color image. The question of if you should run blur exterminators correct only on the separated color channels individually versus running blur exterminators correct only on a combined RGB image is a very intriguing question and I think the results might surprise you as much as they surprised me. And thank you Astro Island for asking that question. I think this is going to make an amazing video. Now to get started, we're going to be working first with NGC 6960. This image was captured with a one shot color camera and a dual narrow band filter. What we're going to do first is set the stage for both scenarios. And what I mean by that is we're going to go to script, HLP, astro image primer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select the NGC 6960 image, star correction, and just execute the script. What this is going to do is separate the image into its individual color channels, perform linear fit, which will get rid of that green color cast so we can see a lot easier. Once linear fit is done, the script will go ahead and recombine the color channels into a combined RGB image, and then it'll run blur exterminators correct only. What this is going to satisfy is blur exterminator correct only run on a combined RGB image. We'll go ahead and exit out of Astro Image Primer. Let's do a quick auto stretch and then let's rename the image combined underscore corrected. This will tell us that this is the image where blur exterminators correct only was performed on a combined RGB image. We'll go back in the script HLP astro image primer. We'll select NGC 6960 one more time. Only this time we'll select star correction and keep channel separated. We'll click execute. And again, the script will go ahead and separate the image into its individual color channels. And it'll perform linear fit to get rid of the green color cast. Only this time, instead of combining the color channels into an RGB image and running blur exterminators correct only, it's going to go ahead and run blur exterminators correct only on each individual color channel. What this will satisfy is blur exterminator correct only run on the individual color channels individually. We'll go ahead and exit out of Astro Image Primer. And then what we want to do is combine our individual color channels into a combined RGB image. So let's go ahead and minimize these really quick. Go to process all processes and let's come down to channel combination. We'll go ahead and drag each color channel to their appropriate box. In other words, red with red, green with green and blue with blue. We'll go ahead and apply exit out of channel combination and let's go ahead and move our individual color channels off to the side. We'll use those in just a moment. Let's go ahead and rename this separated underscore corrected. We'll do a quick auto stretch and let's bring up our combined corrected and compare it with our separated corrected. 
At first glance, everything looks good. Everything seems to have worked great. Everything looks identical. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's pick this bright star over by my cursor. Let's zoom in. And let's go ahead and clone the zoom. Everything seems to be okay. Everything seems to look good. But let's go ahead and zoom out on our combined corrected. Let's zoom in on this area here. Let's clone the zoom one more time. And here we start seeing some differences. If we take a look, let's look at the star over by my cursor on the combined corrected, roughly just below the halfway point top to bottom and on the left side. If we go over to the separated corrected image, the same star, we see something a little bit strange. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And let's go ahead and clone the zoom. And we can see that this star in question starts off sort of green in the bottom right. And as we move to the top left, it gets to this kind of reddish pinkish color. That doesn't exist on the combined corrected image. Let's go ahead and scroll down just a little bit on the separated corrected. We'll clone the zoom. And on these kind of reddish stars, we see on the combined corrected, the colors seem to be pretty balanced. But again, on the separated corrected, we see them start kind of lighter in the bottom right. And as we move to the top left, they get darker. So what happened? This is an artifact of running Blur Exterminators correct only on the separated channels individually. We can even see it in the star just to the left of the two reddish orangish ones. We can sort of see it in the star to the left of the reddish orangish ones where it gets to be this kind of dark purple at the top left and none of that exists on the combined corrected image. And remember the combined corrected image is the image where Blur Exterminator's correct only was run on a combined RGB image. Now it might be easy to say, okay, so when we run correct only on the individual channels, it's changing the characteristics of the stars. It's changing the shapes. It's making sure everything is good. After all, correct only is designed to aid in bloated stars, elongated stars, different imperfections like that to help set the stages for processing later on. So now if we're changing the characteristics of the stars individually with the individual color channels, what's to say that they're not getting misaligned? So when we recombine them, they're not lining up perfectly and that's causing this kind of wobbled, lopsided color pattern. Well, we can easily test that. Let's minimize these really quick. And let's go into process, all processes, and let's come down to star alignment. Now, our channels, our individual color channels, they were separated, linear fit was performed, and then Blur Exterminator's correct only was performed on them. We took these and then we combined them. Let's go ahead and let's align the stars. So now the order of operations would be separate the channels, linear fit, and then we run Blur Exterminator's correct only, which is where they stand right now. And then we're gonna go ahead and realign the stars so everything is guaranteed to line up and then recombine them and check them out again. Let's just use HA or red as the reference channel. Let's go to add views and then let's select green and let's select blue. So now we're going to align green and blue using the red as the reference. We'll go ahead and apply. 
So now star alignment went ahead and aligned green and blue using red as the reference. So all of our stars should now be aligned. Let's go back into process all processes and let's come back down to channel combination. Let's reset. And now red was our reference, so we can use red. But now we're going to use the aligned green and the aligned blue. Let's apply. Let's exit out of channel combination. And we can now get rid of these because we don't need them anymore. We'll do a quick auto stretch. And let's bring up combined corrected. Let's clone the zoom. And we still have the same issue. So even though we aligned the stars after running correct only, we still have the same issue. And that issue is identical. So the star alignment has nothing to do with it. Let's go ahead and exit out of these. And let's check out a different type of data set. Here we have monochrome data. This is IC5070 and it was captured with a monochrome camera. We have HA, S2, and O3 data. The column on the left contains the corrected data, meaning blur exterminators correct only was performed on the individual channels. No correction means that we did not perform blur exterminators correct only. Now, I pre-processed the monochrome data using two time drizzle, so it takes a little bit longer to process. So just for the sake of the video length, I went ahead and already performed the, the steps with Astro Image Primer. But if we go ahead and we zoom in, let's just take this section over here. We'll clone the zoom. We can see that we have some bloating and elongation in the HA data set for no correction. And we can see the same throughout S2. We can see that the correction's been done on corrected versus no correction. And then again with O3, just so we can all agree that the correction has been done on the corrected data set and then the correction has not been done on the no correction data set. Let's go into process all processes, come down the channel combination, and let's just throw HA with red, S2 with green, and finally O3 with blue. We'll apply it into an RGB image and then we'll get rid of these since we won't need them anymore. We'll name this combined underscore, actually these were separated, so separated underscore correction. We'll do a quick auto stretch. And then finally, We'll go back into process all processes, come down to channel combination, and again, we'll throw HA into red, S2 into green, and O3 into blue. Combine that into an RGB image. We'll get rid of these because we won't need them anymore. We'll name this one combined underscore correction. We'll do a quick auto stretch. And then what we'll do from here is let's just take any set of stars and then we'll clone the zoom and we can see the combined correction has not been corrected yet. Whereas separated correction has already been corrected. So what we want to do now since 
separated correction has had correct only treated on the individual color channels. We want to go ahead and treat the combined RGB image with correct only. So what we're going to do is go to process all processes. We'll come down to blur exterminator, select correct only triangle, drag and drop. And then what we're essentially doing is applying blur exterminator correct only to the combined RGB image. Now, it might be easy to think, okay, so monochrome, each channel is captured individually. So you definitely want to apply correct only to the individual channel since they were captured individually. Whereas one shot color, everything's captured at once. So it makes sense to go ahead and do correct only on the combined image. Hold that question in your back pocket because we're about to answer that. So let's go ahead and exit out of Blur Exterminator. Let's scoot combined correction off to the side. Let's open up separated correction. And let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's clone our zoom really quick. And we've already established that it doesn't matter if you perform star alignment after running correct only on the individual channels. It makes no difference. Now, at first glance, it's a little bit hard to see, and hopefully the video can pick it up the way I'm seeing it on the screen here. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's take a look at these two stars over by my cursor. Let's drag the zoom from combined correction over to separated correction. Take a look at the outer edges of the stars. If we look at separated correction, we sort of have this reddish ring, this reddish purplish ring around each of the stars. Let's take a look at combined correction. That reddish ring doesn't exist. The stars are corrected a lot better. Even though both of them are nice and round, they look good, the color is what really matters. The color is what makes the difference between the two methods of correction using Blur Exterminator's correct only. You can even see it over in this diffraction spike. You have this heavy purple spike on the separated correction that doesn't exist on the combined correction diffraction spike. And you find this all over. I went through a number of my data sets, both one shot color and the few monochrome that I have, and the pattern just repeats. I've checked it with my dual narrow band data for one shot color. I've checked it with my broadband data for one shot color and the pattern just repeats but i would love to hear your experience check this out if you haven't yet do your data set both ways let me know what you find drop a comment in the comment section i would love to hear what you see with this what you find with this what you experience with this so i hope you found this video helpful and if you did and want to help support the channel Check out that join button and consider becoming a Hidden Light Photography member. There's tons of perks waiting for you and your support helps me keep testing things like this and bringing you more in-depth content. Another way you can support the channel is by using my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it goes a long way to keep this going. Also, if you haven't done so yet, hit that channel icon that just popped up and make sure to subscribe so you didn't miss anything coming up. Drop a comment below. Have you tried running correct only on separated channels? Did you notice any color issues or different results? I'd love to hear what you found. And when you're done here, check out that next video. I've got more PixInsight tips and Astro workflows waiting just for you. Until the next time, clear skies.